right, guys. Hey, Curtis May here. Welcome to the Practical Wealth Show. And so today we're going to talk real estate, real estate investing, uh, cash flow, and um, investing for cash flow, not for capital gains. And so I have uh, uh, the honor of having Mr. Garrett Sutton. And Garrett is the co-host, right, uh, with your partner of the Reinvest podcast. And I had the pleasure of uh, being interviewed on their show uh, last week or the week before last. And uh, so let me tell you a little about Garrett, and I'm going to let him finish up and tell him about yourself, and then we'll get into some uh, strategic and really tactical things that uh, hopefully you'll be able to walk away with things that you can do and kind of some success stories of what they're doing. So Garrett's a full-time real estate agent, a growing and growing investor in a multifamily and in commercial real estate. He's also a co-host of the Invest Podcast. What I appreciate like me, he's passionate about educating other investors so they can pursue their goals, right, uh, and maximize their life through the power of real estate investing, okay? And Garrett has experience in joint ventures, which we're going to talk about syndications, okay, um, as a general partner and an operator. And his, his team structure invests to partner with other investors, primarily in Ohio in the Midwest. So it's cool because... You know, they don't get the Midwest doesn't get the swings, the up and downs and, you know, that kind of stuff. It's kind of stable, reasonable price. You can get, you know, cash flowing assets. So, uh, Garrett, welcome to the Practical Well Show. Yeah, dude, thank you so much. It's it's kind of cool to be at this point where uh, you were able to come on our show and then vice versa. So, yeah, yeah. And uh, so I thought I thought we had good synergy. So I was like, oh, I need you to talk to my people. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, so what did not tell them? I, I think I put it out there, but uh, anything uh, I missed? <laughs> no, I think that's it, man. Yeah, we um, so I, yeah, like you said, I'm a full time real estate agent. And, uh, you know, I think we had talked about this on our show a little bit. It's wild to me how many real estate agents have their license help people every day for their job, buy and sell real estate. And it's kind of that proverbial, you're three feet from gold, but they never see uh, the benefit that it could serve them uh, personally. So right. uh, as a real estate agent, you know, most people don't have retirement accounts set up, they're 1099, and you gotta do something that's more long-term in nature uh, when you're not gonna be moving houses or properties anymore. Right. So very quickly, I, I got introduced. Uh, my broker, very fortunately, was an investor prior to buying the brokerage. And um, he taught me from square one the power of real estate investing. He had a portfolio of single family houses. And, you know, at the time, I remember it was super intimidating. Like, uh, oh, man, all the myths and, and the noise around being a landlord and owning real estate seemed very scary to me. Getting financing from a lender and being personally guaranteeing debt, you know, <laughs> it's like, right. <laughs> it just seemed like super intimidating. Um, but then I, I just got familiar with the concepts. I think it's like anything when you are into something new, step one is learn the vocabulary, mm -hmm. get acquainted with uh, just learning the ins and outs and the nuances of whatever that strategy is or that industry is. So uh, yeah, I bought a, uh, a mixed use commercial building with my in-laws and uh, that was something that we partnered 50 50 on um, they had had a couple rentals and that partnership was really good because they are very hands-on practical people and i'm very market kind of focused market facing and um so that was our first investment we tackled and that ended up being a great thing so then we've been kind of rinsing and repeating since then and it's led to a bunch of other partnerships along the way so what do you find that uh people you know, that want to invest, but they just are, can't get past go a lot of times. They're, they're addicted mm -hmm. to podcasts and books, but they never really pull the trigger trigger. Um, uh, let's start, let's talk to them. Like as, as a, especially as a, you're servicing these people cause you're providing product. How do people, right. how are people in your opinion, maybe getting in their own way or, or, or what should they let they decide that, then what's next? Yeah, so I mean, I think the the term there that a lot of people, to put words to it, is that analysis paralysis. And, uh, you know, you, you can listen. It's almost like you have too much information at your disposal, yeah. and it creates inaction. 
Right. And that's not obviously what we're going for. Right. So um, I think the ways to really minimize that, how big of a, a step that feels is to, uh, to have a mentor. I know this gets harped on all the time, but there's a reason it, it, for a while. When you're getting into this space, you're listening to podcasts, even on our podcast, one of our questions we ask people, what's the single greatest resource in your real estate investing career? I'm going to say 75% of the time people say mentor, like yeah. somebody in the space who's done what you want to do and having them as a sounding board uh, and to kind of walk alongside of, that's a great first step. Um, and then the other thing too is understand that you're not going to, you're not going to be a Grant Cardone in the first deal you do. Right. Like you got to get in and get reps and, and uh, you got to fail, but in the right ways, because there's ways that you quote unquote fail, but still succeed. So maybe you run a pro forma on a property and you're expecting a 20% cash on cash return and it ends up being 14. Well, it wasn't what you expected, but you had enough safeguards built into place that you still did pretty well and right. you were able to learn and start that feedback of, of, of uh, just the data that you get. So, you know, I had a, oddly enough, it was a pastor and he was talking about how he had to preach sermons every Sunday, every Sunday. And he's like, I'm just looking for singles and doubles. Hmm. And I've kind of adopted that into my real estate, you know, thing. You almost, you're like, I got to find that unicorn deal. That's going to be a home run and you're going to be waiting a long time <laughs> because a, but you're not going to know how to recognize the unicorn deal because you haven't started to invest and understand the principles in real time. So get a mentor, start with something that's very low commitment. That's why a lot of people start in single family houses. You know, in, in our area, if someone were to come into Lima with a hundred thousand dollars or not even cash, but the ability, that kind of buying power, you could get a cash flowing single family home and it's going to make you a couple hundred bucks a month net. And you're going to get to start the process of being a, a homeowner, you know, a landlord. So, mm -hmm. uh, yep. And so, and that's the thing. So the minute I just find, I was just telling somebody before I did this, I was meeting with a client and I was like, you need to do something because what we teach is, you know, investing is about becoming something, not about buying something. Right. Mm -hmm. And so to me, people want you to, they just want to throw money at something, but you've got to become, it's right. be you know, be an investor, you know, understand, like, you know, you said a word performa and there's some people going, what's that? Boo, you're not ready. Right. To be, you're not uh, right. right. You be that If you don't know that, like, how do you know? Cause you don't need to go look at it. And they're looking for, uh, I want a cheap house. You know, I feel like there's this urban myth of the dollar houses, you know, that kind of stuff, I think. Right. And you know, you, you got to figure out the numbers. If it's worth pursuing, you don't need to even look at it first. Right. You got to, you yeah. know, uh, uh, look at it and be able to look the numbers and see if it's worth, okay, exploring it a little bit further. Okay, this is what I got to put into it. This is my cash on cash return, meaning, okay, I got 14%. Well, 14% seems low, but compared to what? Right, right. Well, yeah. and then and then to, to that point as well, um, if you don't understand real estate and you fixate on the cash on cash return, you're going to minimize the principal pay down, yep. the tax benefits. Yep. I mean, there are so many things that are happening in one real estate deal that is ROI. Right. And that's why I, you like know, four I or kind five of, things going on just with the yes. one other than the cash flow. That's just one right. aspect. It's important. And I think Absolutely. you should focus on that, but you've got other stuff too, right? Well, if you invest for cash flow, you will you will always do well. Yeah. So for example, uh, and, and this is a strategy that people have employed in other markets that are high growth, high appreciation markets, right? Let's say this is eight years ago and I saw Phoenix was going nuts and I wanted to take my three, $400,000 down there and invest in some single family homes because they were projecting a 30% appreciation in the next five years. Like that can work. Uh, but maybe, I know I'm going to take a loss until I realize that equity, right? Mm -hmm. Well, that's mm -hmm. a risky strategy because what if the market changes? I mean, there are people right now that are caught holding the bag because the market has done exactly that and they didn't hit those, those fundamentals, right? And, mm -hmm. and here's the three immutable laws of real estate investing. Invest for cash flow, 
secure long-term fixed rate debt, and have adequate cash reserves. If you do those three things, you cannot go wrong. <laughs> yes. Okay, Oops, let's, let's do this. I was trying to do a thing here, right? Invest for cash flow, right? And, um, right, let's show that. Invest for cash flow. What was the other yeah. one? Say that, say that the three again. We'll put them so, on the Yeah, screen. yeah. So the, the three immutable laws of real estate investing. Immutable meaning they never change. These are tried mm -hmm. and true principles. It doesn't matter where you take this strategy. You do these three things, you're going to succeed. Invest for cash flow is number one. Secure long-term fixed rate debt. And so the, you know, the thinking there right now is a lot of people own multifamily properties with floating rate debt or bridge debt. And that means that the interest rates are adjusting to whatever the market uh, is at today. And so your expenses are always changing. But a very simplified version of this is you can go right now to pretty much any lender and do a non-owner occupant Fannie Mae loan, okay? And it'll be amortized over 30 years and it's gonna be subject to whatever you are gonna go buy a home at for your personal residence. So I fixed my interest rate in and my mortgage payments for 30 years. I know they're never gonna change. It doesn't matter what the market does. So now when rents appreciate with inflation, my debt's the same. And so inflation pays down my debt. That's the right. beautiful part about fixed rate debt. So right. that's the second one. The third one is have adequate cash reserves. Um, and, and, you know, the thinking there is your number one goal is to protect and preserve that asset. So, you know, there are unforeseen things that happen in real estate that require capital out of pocket and having those cash reserves on the sidelines is going to help protect your investment. Which is our fourth principle in our five principles of personal finance is liquidity right Li mm -hmm. liquidity is key and uh and so we do that and you're telling me you're learning about that one of the things of where we teach people to store their the best so we'll ask people what's the best place to store cash well it's actually believe it or not you know it's not one thing right because you want to have <laughs> i always say two weeks in the mattress right <laughs> this is the courtesy the baby doomsday prepper right and um a month or so in the bank like eight what i call atm money but then mm -hmm. like two to 12 months is your emergency slash opportunity fund. Everything over three months in my mind is your opportunity fund. And then we teach our clients as you're learning about is to store their cash in. Now we use this type, we, you know, properly structured dividend paying whole life, you know, mm -hmm. structure for cash flow, structure for liquidity where you can be your own bank. So we have clients um, that, Garrett, that have you know enough capital, they don't even need hard money people anymore. Right, not many, right? Because they can they and they do it, and you got unstructured payments, and and you can just store it, and you know because your rents are going into somebody's bank. Why right. not yours? Right, you can be a right. customer of the bank. We say, or you can be the bank. So somewhere when you see this, guys, there'll be a link to a webinar we've done on that. Shameless plug, and. Uh, <laughs> okay. You know, Gary, never, never promote like our, our options. So I was, I'm learning how to, like, I need my own best sponsor. Right. Yeah. And uh, so, you know, we're, where we teach that that's kind of what we're known for principles, drive principles, based playing principles, drive strategy mm -hmm. Being the bank is a strategy and then strategy drives tactics. Tactics are products that you buy to implement. Yeah. And um, that's, we use, we only use whole life. I think if you're not using whole life, you're not doing infinite banking, you're, doing something else but not that mm -hmm. i don't mm -hmm. step with some toes some other real insurance agent <laughs> out there. but um but even with this so let's go back to i want to apply that to what you're talking about so the principle is you want to uh invest for cash flow right right or that's more of a strategy right but the tactic is let's say for example you're going to use single family homes Mm -hmm. Let's say, you know, out of state might be the strategy in a market where you can cash flow, live where I did a rich, what's it called? A real estate guys show, they would say, well, invest where the dollars make, live where you want to live, but invest where the dollars make sense. And sometimes that's mm. outside of your backyard. Right. Right. And right. then the strategy could be, uh, you know, single families managed by somebody else, which we'll talk about, but it also could be uh, buying into syndications where you have a good operator. Right. And so yep. those are the tactical stuff. But, you know, so when I talk to people about saving money, you have to 
capitalize your position so you have reserves so you can deploy capital, right? Right. So it's right out of the richest man in Babylon. Part of all your insurers to keep, save money, right? Budget die expenses, manage your cash flow, make your gold multiply, use right. your savings to buy things that send you a check. And guess what? Wash, rinse, and repeat. And so that's the found. See, I find um that's who we talked about this on your show, that people skip that. Like they just want to jump right to let me throw my money at something, but they don't have the foundation set. Like they only don't have the reserves. They just want to, you know, mm -hmm. uh, uh, well, I'm going to build business credit. You know, I'm going to, but you don't have a foundation. They just are, are it's right. all, not illusion, but it's all, it's, a, it's like a house built on sand. Whereas we want you to people mm -hmm. to build it on rock, where you are yep. properly protected, where you're you got a good cash flow management, where you have you're running your business like a real business. Yep. Yeah, and I, I think it's it's you know admittedly because real estate was my my first entry point to anything investing related, mm -hmm. I can kind of give credence to I kind of did it backwards, and I feel that strain right of mm -hmm. like. Uh, because real estate is not liquid in some ways, right? And so you need, if you, you need to have liquidity outside of that in other forms, be it a whole life policy, be it an equity line, you know, that's uh, given to you on a business or maybe over a portfolio of real estate. See, there are ways to do it, but the actual physical asset itself is not overly liquid. Uh, but that's okay. The, the illiquidity of it. Uh, means that it's also not subject to inflation uh, like cash sitting in the bank is, right? So uh, it, it, it's a piece of the strategy, and I started in that. And so now I'm kind of backtracking saying, how do I set up lines of credit? How do I, you know, set up a life insurance policy that I can put into? And in the next, you know, five years of, of faithfully putting into that, I'm going to have a nice nest egg then to redeploy in the strategy I'm in every day. So, yeah, yeah. absolutely. That's it. So let's talk about, um, so now they got, we got the foundation, right? So now, all right, Curtis, I hear you, but uh, what do I do, right? What can I do? So, right. and so this is where, uh, and why I wanted to have Garrett on is that I, so I want to talk about, I want to give it, I'll let you brag a little bit about your, your business, what you got going on, because I think that, you know, not giving advice i'm not giving advice you know not giving investment i'm not telling you to do anything so that's my disclaimer hopefully you all feel disclaimed right and uh, <laughs> <laughs> but the um but y'all because that's your business you work with investors yeah uh all over the place so you don't have to live in ohio which is the thing because that's a good market so tell them about the the uh, in your mind, the market, why it's a good place, it might be a good place for some of their capital to, and, and what y'all yeah. kind of do with in, investors. Yeah, and that, that's a great, that's a great question. And I, I would imagine that for a lot of your audience, uh, they can probably relate to this dynamic. Okay. So let's say I live in a larger market, larger being could be uh, Philadelphia, something as big as New York, uh, somewhere on the East Coast. And the, the trend over the last, I'm going to say probably decade, is that uh, returns are doing this. They're getting compressed, mm -hmm. compressed, 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 yeah. uh, especially with all of the liquidity that was put into the economic system in the last, you know, 24, 36 yeah. months. Yeah. So then you had a lot of money chasing a very uh, small supply. And so returns just got, you know, decimated for people. And so we saw a cascade, okay? So bucket number one was these tier one markets and people could no longer find the returns that made sense for them to deploy capital. So where right. did they go? They went to places like Dayton, they went to Charlotte, they went to Chattanooga and they went to smaller markets because their dollars went further there and institutional capital hadn't gobbled up a lot of that supply. Right. Well, then that money comes into a tier two market and now I'm a local investor in a tier two market and I'm getting crowded out by these guys coming in from New York. So where do I go? I go to the tier three market. So there's been a cascade into markets like us where people are chasing returns and yep. we aren't very institutionalized, which means that out of state investors that are private can come in and still find good deals on real estate, be it a portfolio of single family houses, a one-off property, small multifamily, commercial assets. 
Uh, so we work with out-of-state investors from all over the place, from the West Coast to the East Coast. And one of the big selling points for us is if you're going to buy out of state, someone's got to manage that property. So yeah. you have to have a system to do it yourself, or you have to have a trusted team uh, that's going to execute the asset management of that, uh, that property. So we do have a, an in-house property management company with our brokerage. Mm -hmm. And that's a huge benefit for people because a lot of the, a lot of the properties we already manage. And if it's ones that we don't, it's in our backyard. So we're able to roll that into an, an already existing structure mm -hmm. uh, that people can wrap their heads around and that operates very efficiently. So you can come in, you got to have your ducks in a row. We can't do the financing for you. You know what I mean? You have to be a qualified buyer. It's got to be the right time for that strategy. Right. Assuming that all of those things are, are true, we look at your goals and say, what are you after in real estate investments? Which is, which is key. Because yes. a lot of people, again, are like, well, I just, I heard real estate's good, so I just want to do it. Well, what are you looking for? You know, are you looking for more of a passive scenario, active scenario? What type of asset class are you looking for? Mm -hmm. You know, we collectively bring like 25 years of experience into this with our team. And we sit down with people and help them evaluate what it is that they're looking for. And then we I think that's it. critical right there. Like, I don't think people... I know most, I hate to say this, uh, to throw people under the bus, but uh, if they're just a tactical agent, they're not thinking about, okay, what do you want to do with this and building, you know, like a typical financial advisor will talk about, you know, retirement and building up, you know, and they're using the, an asset class called paper to build this nest egg so you can live off of it and hope you don't die before you run out of money or hope you do die before you run out of money. So I, mean, I think it's the other way around. Right. And, <laughs> and, uh, we want to get you, I think, um, uh, Garrett and I both want to get you out the rat race in a decade or less. Yeah. Amen. With, with, you know, with, I mean, with, with buying cash flow, you know, so if you can net $300 a month, then if you have 10 of those, that's $3,000 a month, $36,000. Well, yep. you would need a million dollars in equities to generate a similar cash flow. Mm -hmm. Using the four percent withdrawal it was like forty thousand, but close enough, and uh, you could do that. You know, and it might take you forty years to do that, and that's debatable. But you could maybe do that in three to five years, depending on how aggressive you are. So I, I think that you just need to think about how this. One of the things I do, I was I did this. What did I do this for? Uh, yesterday I was working with somebody, and I said, "Look, let me just show you. Let me just drive home, and I do this little exercise I take people through called retirement ready or not." And I said, all right, let me take your 300,000, your 36. And then I proceed to show her that she would have $4 million at retirement, but her lifestyle, because they made good money, was going to be like $400,000 a year. And they would be out of money, even with $4 million, 65, because um, their cost, they, they need to live on 400,000 because of inflation, and they'd be mm -hmm. out of money in, um, by 70. Woo! And I said, when you see that, what's going through your mind? Like, so I'm saying you might just want to reposition some of your capital so you can, and she was already learning how to buy real estate. She's in the process mm -hmm. of finishing up, a, a, I think, a duplex right now. And she's on the right thing. But I said, let me just let you know why you're on the right path, right? And so right. that you don't get swayed by by other stuff. And so I think that's what, you know, what Garrett said. He gets that. And you want somebody on your team that gets that can help you, you know, find them and manage them. <laughs> okay. And, that, and that's the, that's the first bucket uh, that we had talked about. You know, the second bucket is that uh, at the end of the day, I don't want to be a real estate agent forever. Right. right because, right. you know, this is my way to get out of the rat race and uh, be that investor. So, you know, we practice what we preach. We help investors. We are investors. And so, you know, one of the things that, you know, reinvest is our, our brand associated with our podcast, but, uh, level five capital is our our team. When I say my team, I'm my co-host Seth, uh, and then I have two co-workers, one of them being my broker. And we all invest together from that, and we structure investments uh, for other investors uh, that want to be equity partners with us in mm -hmm. different scenarios. So sometimes that's a joint venture scenario. We just closed a 53-unit mobile home park uh, back in May, and um, that we needed a half a million dollars worth of, of capital and had investors that had that money on the sidelines and wanted to be a part of that opportunity. 
Um, and then they also brought some other skills to the table. And then a couple of years ago, we did a 26 uh, unit portfolio acquisition in Lima uh, that we now manage in our company. So, you know, those are ways for people to maybe not feel as exposed uh, mm -hmm. or on the front lines of being, I own five houses, you know, mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. but still get all the benefits of, of real estate investing. And why it's important for what your goals are, are we a Florida market where uh, we've seen 15% appreciation in the last, you know, six to 12 months. And like, that's not us. People come to us for cash flow, and typically cash flow means buy and hold. You're going to hold that real estate for a long time. It's not transactional. You're not going to flip it. Um, you know, the exception would be the last couple of years because of what the market's done at a macro level. Right. Um, but, but the beauty of that, let me give you an example. We have an investor. I'm going to change his name up. Let's just say his name is Tim. So Tim has an extensive portfolio of multifamily and single family houses in our area. Okay. Now, the genius of what he's done is he has uh, moved. Okay, so if you draw a line in the middle, you have active income, and on the other side, you've got passive income. And both of those are taxed differently in the eyes of the federal government, right? Yeah. So the yeah. active income is taxed more uh, than passive income. So the more money you're able to move over to the passive income category, the, the more tax uh, benefits and savings that you'll have. So he has moved the ball. I'm just going to, I don't know this for sure. This is just my, my guess. My guess is 60% of his income is probably in the passive category. Okay. And so when Donald Trump doesn't pay taxes, like that's what they're talking about. They're using real estate as a vehicle to do that. There's another thing called a real estate professional designation. If you haven't looked into it, you should, uh, especially if you're thinking about going hard after real estate, because with a real estate professional designation, you can take, uh, let's see if I say this right, passive losses and uh, you write off active gains, okay? So it allows you to bridge that gap and take passive losses, depreciation, uh, cost segregation, and write off active income that, you know, from maybe your job, uh, you know, different stuff like that. So there's so many ways that you can right. use real estate uh, to do that. And there's different seats on the bus. You can be active, you can be passive and we just help people with whatever the needs are. Yeah. That's the key. You know, what do you want? And then what's the strategy that's going to get you what you want and, uh, what's your time frame? It's, it's all of that kind of stuff. So I think that's, uh, uh, that's brilliant. And I think it's important to have relationships, boots on the ground, so to speak in the market that you want to, uh, uh, be in, you know, yep. what, what, let me ask you this. What do you think, uh, makes Lima, right. Or, or, or that part of Ohio mm -hmm. a good other than, you know, pricing and cash for like, are there people there with jobs that can pay the rent or, <laughs> you know, that yeah, right. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's crazy. We've really seen, uh, so Lima took a hit in the seventies. We were a big railroad industry. And uh, obviously when that uh, business model and that industry declined, Lima declined as well. So we went into this kind of 20 year slump. Well, I'm gonna say about 10 years ago, uh, Lima began to uh, come out of that slump and through a mm -hmm. lot of factors, there was a lot of manufacturing. Uh, P&G is one of the big employers in our area. We're just north of their home office in Cincinnati. Okay. And so they've expanded like crazy. So just from a local level, uh, they're in the process of investing like $300 million in an expansion that's going to create, you know, more jobs. And that's been the, uh, the MO for them over the last decade. Um, we've got government contractors here, uh, drone dynamics, huge manufacturing base, uh, two healthcare systems. We've got three colleges that are loc located in Lima. So our economy, kind of the pillars to that are more robust than what they were. We also have a, a refinery. Uh, that is a huge driving factor of what happens in our area. But one of the things that's kind of been an up and coming trend, and, and it's actually twofold. One is we are on the I-75 corridor. So distribution and location to the highway has been increasingly more important for people as the Amazons and all the different uh, kind of last minute, last mile delivery stuff has been uh, changing and shaping our culture. 
and right. how people commute uh, because job opportunities have opened up. So being along the I-75 corridor, we've seen more development happen around that. Um, and then lastly, Columbus, which is an hour and a half away from us, uh, just had Intel locate there. And they're projected to, you know, billions with a B is the investment uh, that's going to happen there. And we're going to feel the ripper effects of that. Uh, it's going to be one of the largest chip manufacturing uh, companies and investments in the nation. So there's a lot of cool things happening in Ohio. Classic, it's been a flyover state, um, but that's changing. And just Google, go on Bigger Pockets, which is a great resource if you're looking to get in, interested in real estate investing. It's a peer to peer investor platform, tons of articles, tons of great resources on real estate. And type in Midwest rent growth and just look at what the Midwest is doing and the stability of it compared to the East Coast and West Coast, even the Southeast. Um, we have that stability and consistency that people can wrap their heads around. I love that. I think, and Grant, thanks for that resource because I think that you have to, you know, I, I hate people, you know, that call me and they, they hear, they give me clips, they little clips they heard on, um, IG or uh, TikTok and, they, and they're letting that be their financial advice, you know, they're, they're <laughs> right. Investing, right. You know, I was like, no, right. You know, I mean, it should hopefully pique your interest, but you have to go deeper. So I think we can have long form conversations like this. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Can, you know, we can really break it down and then, you know, give them somebody they can talk to to help them, you know, because I always tell people, look, there's offense and defense. So Curtis is the defensive coordinator, right? I'm going to make yeah. sure that you save, protect, leave a legacy, have liquidity. And our fifth principle is velocity velocity is offense so reinvest if you like what they're doing can be part of your offense strategy of yeah. deploying your capital to buy cash flowing assets or one way to do it right out of the four asset classes that we talk about uh garrett is is business real estate paper and commodities right mm -hmm. really the top three are business real estate paper right and uh so it's it's any or all of the above you just got to pick what you like get a mentor yeah go to work yep and and the trust is is huge like there are certain principles that never go away it doesn't matter how much technology has changed the way we do things business is about people and it's built on the foundation of trust right yeah. so yeah. the the syndication topic if that's a new term for you as a listener essentially that is uh, a group of people tackling a large real estate investment that you couldn't do on your own. And you are a limited partner in that investment, which means your liability is limited, but the upside is also limited. It's a little more mm -hmm. of a curated passive approach. Well, the barrier to entry for syndications has drastically been reduced over the last five years as that term has come into the mainstream, which means you have a lot of real estate operators like myself that are broadcasting, hey, you can be a part of this investment, this class A, you know, multifamily property in Charlotte, North Carolina, or a car wash. I mean, you can syndicate anything. And yeah. people just think because they have nice marketing and they sound like they know what they're talking about, they can be trusted with my money. <laughs> well, right now, uh, all of that's being tested and, and it's being stress tested by the, the market right now. And there's a lot of people that are losing money because they were a little premature about putting their money with somebody and didn't vet them properly. So, you know, do your homework. If, it, if it's a phone call with us, uh, if it's a phone call with somebody else, do your homework on them and how they operate. Because, uh, you know, what sucks is when you save up hard-earned capital and you lose it. <laughs> right. Right. Probably number one is we are in Buffett say uh, two rules about money. Don't lose money. Rule number one. And rule yeah. number two is don't forget rule number one. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And, right. Right. So part of that is so we teach the um, three rules of investing, invest in what you know, invest in what you can control, chase returns, but or invest in knowing. And then I would add an adjunct to that invest in. Uh, what's the word vetting? good operators, like knowing a good yeah. operator from a bad operator, if you're going to do syndications, mm -hmm. you know, and do your due diligence, call them, kick the tires, look at it, you know, how is it, is it going to yep. pay at the end? Is it going to pay monthly or quarterly? What can you expect? What's my downside risk? You know, you want to ask questions yeah. about it. Um, 
you know, how do you, how do they talk to you? How do you report? You know, it's like stuff I've heard, you know, be, I have, I went to this guy who said uh, the, a good, be a, don't just be like a mutual phone. Where you put in your fro and K and don't think about it. He says, be, don't bug them. Like it can't be, we're, neither one of us is going to let you do your last dollar, but you want to be an active, passive investor. Like know yes. what's going on. Active is engaged. And let me yeah. give you, and this would be a great resource for your listeners. So please check this out. Uh, just in our backyard in Columbus. Uh, actually, you can go to our Reinvest podcast. I uh, forget what episode that is. His name's Jim Pfeiffer, okay? And uh, Left Field Investors is their name. Let me look real quick. I'll tell you what episode we interviewed him. Episode 33, Expert Advice on Vetting Investment Opportunities as a Passive Investor. Jim Pfeiffer started out as a financial planner, moved over into real estate, and now with Left Field Investors, they've created a community of passive investors, and you go in together with other passive investors, you vet people together, and you dialogue in a kind of a, a community forum of mm -hmm. good operators, bad operators, what to look for, what not to look for. So call us, by all means, we're a great Midwest market to invest in. Uh, but left field investors would be a great place for people to learn along other like-minded individuals. Uh, so we're going to put that link to your episode in the show notes. So send it to me. I'm going to put that okay. link in the show yeah. notes. And um, uh, yeah, I just, I like people to do homework. Don't just, you know, we sound good. They seem like nice people. Here's <laughs> you don't do that, right? Right. And because uh, uh, um, it's your money at the end of the day, right? And so you, yeah. it, it's it's it can't be more important to us than it is to you. It's important to us, but it needs to be important to you. And uh, there's nothing, there's no scenario where you become successful where you are not involved in knowing what's going on. You know, and and just your trust is somebody to to do that. There's no if you look at in the, you look at the Forest 400, it's a formula there, right? They build businesses, they buy real estate, you know, and they, a lot of times they build businesses and that's their expertise. And then they deploy their capital in real estate, in syndications, but they don't not know what's going on. They're just, right. they're, they're working in what Dan Sullivan called in their unique ability, right? And then they, they find somebody, your unique ability is real estate or syndications. And so now we're, I'm creating cash. And you're deploying my cash to bring mm -hmm. me back more cash so I can buy more ca right. you know, cash flowing assets. So it's the first right. flow is cash asset cash. And uh, so I love this. So, so uh, Gary, you're not gonna talk about this all day, but tell me, is there anything I didn't mention that you want to talk about uh, as, we, as we close and uh, or some parting words of wisdom and then finally tell them how to, how to follow you and, and reach out to you if, uh, you know, if they, if this didn't pique their interest at all. Absolutely. I mean, first of all, I, I love the fact that we're able to have this conversation because a lot of the time uh, people in the financial sector, uh, financial planning, they kind of taboo real estate. And it, it always, I don't know if it's because they can't sell real estate, they can sell mutual funds. And so oh, that's why. Let me tell you, that's, <laughs> that's the, it's not on their grid, right? Man. So remember, this is what I always tell you, the financial institution, here are the four rules that govern all financial institution advice. They want your money. Yeah. Right. How often? Every pay. Right. They want it. They want to uh, keep it as long as possible. So they want it every pay. They want to keep it as long as possible, and they want to give it back as slow as possible. So if you, if I'm a fund manager, because they get paid on the assets under management, right? So how excited are you if you're getting fees off of my money, and I got a half a million dollars? I said, you know, I want to take, uh, Garrett. I want to take a hundred thousand, and I want to deploy it into four. Uh, you know, I want to, for down payments on two or three real estate assets. Well, you just took a pay cut, right? Because your mm -hmm. assets under management went, get, get, you know, went down and you can't, that ain't nowhere in your grid. So that's not a good look unless they're doing it or they're like me where I, I've lost my religion about Wall Street 20 years ago, right? Uh -huh. and, uh, <laughs> and, uh, so that's why it is. I mean, it's, and they're not bad people. It's just your, right. what's your viewpoint? Right, your view. Yeah. So their world is built around paper, right? Yep. The, out of the asset classes, it's all about paper. It's all about Ipsen and 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 hypotheticals and stock market has done blah blah blah. But there's more than one way to skin a cat. So you've got to say, yeah. okay, 
I I want because you could see here's the thing. I know I gave you the last word. I just you made me think of something. So you know, <laughs> Delmo, you get the last word. So the what's his name? Um, Garrett, not Garrett. Um, Warren Buffett's mentor, oh. Benjamin Graham. Right? He says investment is something you put your prince money into where your principal is safe. And you have a reasonable opportunity mm-hmm. to make a profit. If it doesn't yeah. fit that definition, you are speculating. Mm. Right? And he would talk about securities at the time when it is book. Wow. This is from the intelligent investor. So now if you apply that to the way the industry works now, most people, and I'm not saying anything wrong with speculating. I just want you to know you are speculating. Okay. Cause a lot of yeah, people think right. you're know when you're doing it. Yeah. Know what you're doing it. And see, so now, Real estate takes a little more activity and learning stuff and this and that. So, but you know, if you're getting a check every month or every quarter, as you get your money back, your risk goes down. Mm-hmm. So, cause you're getting your principal back out. And yep. so, you yep. know, that's, that's, you have to, you know, it's just, you got to look at stuff a different way. So anyway, you, you inspired me to say that. So I was- <laughs> <laughs> no, that's good, man. And, and again, that's, uh, we're passionate about what we do, and it's clear that you are as well. And uh, and there's a reason. And it's not just theory. I'm not doing this so I can make a commission off of somebody. I'm doing this myself. Like, dude, my tax bill last year was so stupid low that I was like, I am feeling in real time the benefits of real estate. So, right. like, it's not something I tell other people to do and don't follow myself. I am doing it. You can come along with me if you want to or not, but I'm going to do it. Right. And, uh, and right. so that's kind of our mindset that way, but yeah, uh, we do a weekly podcast, reinvest podcast. Um, so, you know, our heart behind that is we want to show people how to maximize their life through the power of real estate investing. I know you said that at the beginning of the show, um, you know, you only got one life and you need to live it. And this is a vehicle that can help you be in the driver's seat and not be a byproduct of, of just your circumstances. So, um, do a weekly podcast, check us out all on Spotify, Apple, you know, iTunes, all that stuff. We're on the major platforms. Um, and then, yeah, our brokerage is Heart Sock Realty. And uh, I'll put my my uh, contact information, my cell number, my email uh, to you in the links. You can reach out to us and just pick our brain on the market or ask us about just anything real estate related. And we can pick up this conversation in person um, and, yeah, see how we can help people. There you go. Guys, I'm going to let that be the last word. I think that's awesome. And, uh, uh, you know, reach out and kind of, you know, the explorer is always a good time to invest, right? And so yep. real estate is, don't worry about the rates. The rates don't matter. I mean, now I came out of high school. This is going to date me. I just had a birthday last week. The rates to buy a house was like 17%. People were still buying real estate at 16, 17%, right? And, um, uh, but the houses now were like 40,000, 50,000, but, you right. know, but, but those same houses, are worth half a million dollars now, right? And so you just got to, you know, find good stuff that makes sense and buy it, right? And then, you and know. Can I add like something to this, Curtis? Occurred. Yeah, please. This is this is a great, somebody told me this. Uh, I think Seth was the one that passed this on to me. But it's not about timing the market. It's about time in the market. Yes. And that's how you get off a go. If you're trying to time the market, you're not going to time the market. Time in the market is the compound nature of any investment. So there you go. So we're going to have all this stuff in the show notes. Garrett, thank you so much for uh, dropping these gems on my listeners today. That was that. This is Absolutely. fun. Absolutely. And I always talk. I love talking money and cash flow, right? And um, because I found I'm a good beach boss. You can't eat equity, all right. <laughs> and so <laughs> if you want to go to the beach and stay at the beach, you need the cash flow, and you need to think about buying you know, saving and buying every t- chance you get a cash flowing assets. And then, you know, then you can replace your car payment. You can replace your mortgage payment and you systematically knock off your expenses. And then when you, uh, we call that, uh, Garrett, in our, we have a newsletter called the cash flow in air. We call in that getting to a position of F you, right. <laughs> where, where, <laughs> where you have passive income, twice your expenses. So our goal at practical wealth is get you to the F you position in a decade or less. And, that's easy uh, man yeah <laughs> yeah so. it's 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 uh it's simple but it's not mm-hmm. easy right or it's easy mm-hmm. to, and so i think that's where you come in from the discipline standpoint of helping people realize that 
because I, in my mind, I always wrote this off as something for somebody else who mm -hmm. makes more, knows more. And it's right in front of me. I think the regret that a lot of people are going to have is that they didn't act on what was in front of them the whole time. So. Yeah. They're like, I don't have money. You got to, uh, I don't, I my credit's bad. All that stuff can be fixed. Right. Yep. And uh, you just don't know how and see why you need to reach out to somebody. You need to ask yourself how much is not knowing costing you. Ah, that's good. Right. And so, and how long do you want to, to you know, what, what, I was at a Myron Golden event. So how long, if you fight for your limitations, you get to keep them? Oh, ouch. <laughs> <laughs> so I, had, I just heard that. I thought that I find like That's I can't good, work man. at it or something, right? That's and, good. Uh, <laughs> so anyway, this is fun. And um, uh, guys, go out there, make it a profitable day. Garrett, thank you. Go check out the Reinvest podcast. And uh, uh, if you like this, leave us a review. Share it with your friends. Practical Wealth Show. We out. Y'all have a great day.